this will give you some insight on this recording. Oh, you're not staring. Um, oh, sorry. Goodbye. And then this will help you with our next or event. Or you've been retouched by me. You know, you can He's see the original image here. He's talking about photos. And I simply, you know, cut them out. And then he'll go and to the setup. With, uh, by a photographer, and I just retouch them, and, and you have some good end results to choose from there. So I'm also going to be including some other images I got. I got this image from Google. I'm actually going to be using this image. Uh, I also got this from Google. So I'm going to jump over to InDesign and start fresh. So if I create a new file, a uh, new document, and... Again, I like to work with the blank canvas uh, unless I need to do uh, another option here. So I'm going to uncheck facing pages and I'm going to create my size here. So uh, when it comes to the table tent and designing for your menu and brochure, you want to really think of the design aspect of this. So I strongly suggest that you sketch out each. And what you want to look for are some common visual elements to place in each. That could be anything from a, a tablecloth, which I'm going to be using. You have to decide for yourself. The design aspect is up to you, and I'll show you how, uh, how and what I did. I'm going to be creating a table tent size that will be six by six in square. The size is up to you. There's no specifications as to what size you need to work with. So I'm going to be creating a six by six inch document. But I'm going to do some math here, and I'm going to create a table tent that will connect at the bottom to create an actual tent. So I'm going to create six by six, and then there's a back. So if you calculate the height, it will be 12 inches, and then plus another two inches on the top and bottom for tucking underneath when you fold the tent. So I've got a, a six inch wide document, and uh, I'm going to have, let's see, six, 12, 13, 16 inch document uh, in height. I'm just going to remove the gutter here and I'm going to also remove the margins. However, for bleed, the bleed will be an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to have a point, uh, one, two, five inches for the bleed. So let me copy that and uh, I'm going to place that in the bleed cell right here and then hit tab and that will populate all of these cells here. And then everything looks good and I will hit OK. So now I'll set up my guidelines. So I have a six inch wide document with my red bleed line around the outer edges. So uh, it'll be six inches square uh, for the front and back and then two inches on the top and bottom for the folding aspect of this. So I've got uh, a total of 16 inches. So I'm gonna put a guideline down to at the eight inch mark. That will be the folding area, the folding line. And then I will bring, I'll come down two inches and um, two inches from the bottom, which will be look like that. I'll change, just to double check, I will change my ruler origins to be zero in the center by clicking on where these rulers meet in the corner, clicking and dragging down here, and now this becomes zero, so I can see here that everything looks good, and I'm ready to proceed. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, uh, note that I have in Illustrator, I have a variety of uh, logos here that was uh, provided. So this is the town logo here, and uh, I also have it uh, set up where everything's in white. Uh, let's start out with uh, going back to InDesign, and what I'm going to do is uh, create a uh, text box, I'm sorry, a picture box here, and I will click and drag here. And I'm going to place an image that looks like this. I'm actually going to start fresh and do a search for a wood grain. So I'll just paste wood grain in here, do a search for that, go to images, and a high resolution image to place in there. So under search tools, I'm going to select a larger than option, and I'll go with uh, two megapixels. Uh, this is a very large one. So I'll select this one. Okay, I'll click on view image and then right click on that and save this as a uh, wood grain. Okay, and I'll hit save. All right, so back in InDesign, um, I'm actually going to place that file into this entire area here and see how that works out. So, file, place. And go to my wood grain, and that would be here. 
and there we go. So that uh, kind of goes in there and that looks pretty good. So just to hide the, the ends of this, I'll bring it here. So notice that I'm bringing it to the bleed area, okay? So I want this to trim the inside line here. So this edging or bleed area will be considered waste. All right, this upper area here and the lower area here will be the folding area where the table tent will kind of connect together underneath. All right, so I've got my image there and I'm going to go to my layers panel, lock this, create a new layer and then bring in another element here. So uh, I'm going to work with this tablecloth. Okay, so I've already cut this out. There's other ways to do that, but basically I want to be able to cut this out and just use this tablecloth to place on top of that wood. So back in InDesign, I'm going to create a, well, let me just place it. I will place that in here. Just position this over here. All right, and now what I'll do is, wait a second, object, clipping path, options, and select Photoshop path, and hit OK. OK, so there we go. So if we look at that file in Photoshop, um, you'll note that I had that path already created. OK, so that's how that came about. So now what I'm going to do is I want to let me just actually move this over. I want this to kind of be the edge that it runs along. And I kind of like this idea because as a viewer looks at this, you know, it, psychologically the hand is going out and touching the cloth if they decide to pick it up, although the table tent is not meant for that. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to go to my selection tool. And, and as I'm dragging, I'm holding down shift, shift, and alt. Okay, so the shift key constrains it, and the alt key duplicates it. So now what I'm going to do is, let me just bring this in here again. All right, so I want these to kind of match, so I'm going to flip this. So if I uh, note that the center point is centered here, go to transform, flip vertical. All right, so it matches up nicely. Actually looks a little fake, but you get the idea. All right, so the next step is this. I'm going to bring in a food element. So that food element will be, uh, where is this? Uh, I like this here. So again, note I've already created my path around it. You know, you need to have a little bit of Photoshop knowledge to be able to work with the pen tool or Illustrator knowledge. If you know how to work with the pen tool, you can essentially outline these elements using um, your pen tool. And there's other ways too. You could use the content aware feature and select all of these elements here and then create a clipping path out of that selection or work path. Okay, so uh, actually, let me just show you that. So if I go to my quick selection tool and click and start dragging, it's a really quick way, as long as you have contrast, it's a quick way of, of selecting an element here. You, know, you just have to make sure that you have all these elements in here. So one quick way to see and make sure that you have everything is to work with quick mask. So, so to show you what I mean, Again, this is supposed to be a course on InDesign, but it also involves, you know, working with the other applications. So just to give you a heads up here. So if I hit the letter Q, this is showing you in red what I just selected. OK, so it's a good way of seeing what you want to select. So what you can do really is go in there and actually use the painting tools to fill in this area. You're essentially editing a selection by doing this. OK, so um, if I hit Q again, I'll exit that and then I can go back in and continue to click on where I want okay and then when I'm ready when I have a good selection around here I'm going to go to upper right hand corner and select make work path hit okay and then double click on that and hit okay again to save that path and there you go okay so that's how that was done so uh, back in InDesign okay I'm going to um, uh, I know I want to bring it down to this area here so I'm going to click on the bottom area here and go to file place 
and place my uh, image, which is, and here it is here. And it's, it's about the right size. Um, actually, let me just scale this up a little bit. And then I need to, object, clipping path, Oops. object. Notice I did not have it selected correctly. Um, clipping path options, and then select Photoshop path, and there we go. All right, so I will move this down here, and there we go. So now I want to bring in my logo, so I'm going to go to File, Place, and uh, look for the logo that is already done in Illustrator, as I noted before, and it's all filled with white, so I'll double-click on that to place that. So I fit the content to the frame. I'm happy with the size. Now I'll, I need to add something else. So I'm going to make this an appetizer table tent. So I'm going to go to my text tool and create a little text box here. Type in appetizers. And uh, highlight that. And uh, let me just first scale this up so I can see it. Uh, I'll choose a brush script and, and scale this up more. So I'm going to double click on the type and go up here and make the, the font white. Zoom in. I use spacebar control or spacebar command if you're in the in the uh, Mac environment. And all right. So now what I'll do is I'll, I'll select both and I'll, I'll create a little effect here for a drop shadow to make this more easily readable. So object effects and drop shadow. And um, if I leave this preview checked, I now have a drop, drop shadow um, that makes this more easy to read. And I'm also going to create a drop shadow for the image here. Uh, so, um, object effects, drop shadow, all right, and I'll accept the default, hit OK, and there we go. All right, so now I am going to also, you know, let's also create a drop shadow for the table clause. Object uh, effects, drop shadow, all right, so... You can't see the drop shadow because of the angle, so I'll change the angle so this way it's coming in from the, so it's 50 degrees. And I did not have both selected, so I'll hit OK. Go back down here. And um, what I'm going to do is make it easy for myself to select this by shift-clicking, and I can lock these by hitting Control or Command L. So that locks them. Now I can easily select that. And I will uh, go to Object uh, Effects Drop Shadow, and I'll make it the same uh, 50 degrees. And hit OK. All right. So now we have that. Okay. So the next step is to create the actual menu, which I'll put on the back side of this menu, and of course I'll have to flip that upside down. So what I'm going to do is create a shape that uh, first of all I'm going to create a shape here actually let me create a new layer I, I usually like to have things on on their own layers uh, but I have uh, forgot to do that so I'm going to create a rule here I like I like rules all right so I'm gonna I'm just gonna create a rule that kind of goes looks something like this here and uh, I'm going to make it white so let me double click on this stroke with the background and make that white. I'll hit OK. And um, what I'm going to do is give this kind of a, a different look. So let me go up to three points and I'll select a thick, thin border for it. All right. And it, I may have to go to five points. OK. So we have something that looks like that. And I can also lessen the transparency to make it a little subtle. So that looks. Uh, uh, pretty good for now, and um, note that it's coming above the tablecloth, so what I can do is this. Let me uh, create a new layer, and I'm going to 
select the table clause and drag this red little box here up to the upper layer. All right, so this will place just the table clause on its own layer and above these rules. So it kind of has a nice look now. All right, so I will do the same thing. I'll create another layer and create a box that will kind of be centered within that border. All right, and I'm going to fill that with white because I want to have text in there that's readable. So let's make it white. And then what I'll do is I'll create an effect for that. And that will be, if you click on this button right here, the gradient feather tool, I'm sorry, double click. And what this shows is a gradient. So, okay. So let me just try to hide this here. So let me change the angle of that. Okay. Um, and it's working with this gradient, these gradient stops here. So I'm going to take this black one, drag it to the middle. Oops, let me do this. Let me just click at the center. I'm going to add a stopper. So I'm clicking here. All right. And uh, I can transpose these. All right. So I have black in the center, which essentially represents the white on the gradient. But I can also click and drag and customize this gradient by clicking these little diamonds at the top and dragging them to the left and right. And this way, I kind of have this gradual gradient. Uh, you can always only go to like within 13% of either end. So it kind of looks like that. So I will hit OK. And I can also expand this out if I wish. To look like that. I'll move it down. OK, so then what I'll do is I just want to create something that has some uh, a look of, of um, transparency here. So uh, let's see here. Let me lock that and lock everything else, select that, and I will reduce the opacity of that so I have something that looks like that. All right, so let's lock that, and I will now create an, another new layer, and then uh, this will be where my text will go. So I'll create a text box, click and drag down, and I'm going to actually create a table out of this. All right, I'm going to have, this will be my menu. So I'll have um, eight rows of text and two columns. All right, so I'll hit OK. I will drag this down to the bottom. Um, hmm. One second, let me drag this down to the bottom. Then select all, and then go to distribute rows evenly. All right, um, I will select the top one, right click and merge that. And then I'll put in my text. All right, so I have it copied on the side here. So I have uh, appetizers, so I'll copy and paste. All right, and uh, I have assorted names here. Copy and paste. And okay, so I, I put in the same price for each one. So I'm just going to select all these and uh, make these right aligned right. All right. These are all aligned left, but I'm also going to make these, I'm going to change the font all at the same time. So I'll, uh, I don't know, a brush script. Uh, okay. And I'll change the point size. Uh, that's fine. 18. And then I'll make uh, appetizers. Also, I will center that and make this also brush script. And I will make that very large. All right, so we have that. What I need to do also is remove the stroke because by default, there is a black, a thin black one point stroke around this. So I will uh, select all these. Right click, go to cell options and strokes and fills, and simply make this uh, no stroke and hit OK. So we have that. All right, if I hit W, I'll hide all my rules and guides, and we have that so far. So, uh, what we, what I like to see is a dotted line in here. So, what we can do is this I'll go to the line tool 
and click and drag. And as I'm dragging, I'm holding that shift so I have a perfectly horizontal line. Letting go. By default, it comes in as a one-point thick rule. I will change that to, to, let's see, two points. But then from this drop-down menu here, I'll select uh, Japanese dots, let's say. Okay. Um, and, and then we click away, and there we go. And now it's uh, simply a matter of copying. If I click and start dragging, I'm going to hold down um, Shift and Option or Alt, and then let go with my cursor first. I want it to be a perfectly vertical slide so that this lines up here. So what I'll do now is click and drag this over to the right, and now we have that. I'll take the top one and slide down and shift and alt and then size that okay all right so there we go so we have that that looks pretty good i may want to take this background here and uh that's the white area uh this layer here i should have named these layers if i select that i note that i have it 74 percent i want to make this a little more readable yeah, that makes it very readable all right, so since this is going to be flipped, okay, we need to select all this and, and flip it. So all I need to do is, on layer 6, where all of the text is, including all the dotted lines, I'm going to select everything by clicking on this little box here, and then make sure that the reference point is centered. All right, if it was up in any corner, it would be jump out of position here. So. I'm going to simply go to Object, Transform, and Flip Vertical. But then I need to, see now it's backwards, it's mirrored. So Object, uh, Transform, Flip Horizontal. There we go. So now it's readable when it's upside down. All right, um, again, another long video here, so I apologize for that, but I hope that helped. Take care, guys. Bye. Does that make sense? On your, uh, setting up your... Table 10? Yeah, it does. Okay, because that's the um, next uh, project. So let me stop. Here. Okay, and then um, we'll just take a look at the instructions. The week seven assignment. Now, this is worth. Uh, 15% of your grade, and it's due by the end of the week. Uh, this is resizing. Uh, it's Some of the outcomes will be for you to interpret and prioritize and organize concepts um, for advertising your graphic design presentation, print and web. Utilize manual and industry standard graphic design software. Communicate and negotiate effectively with producers and suppliers. So the outcomes will be to describe printing, um, complete a three or four color or full color mechanics, um, demonstrate the understanding of paper selection, folding and binding, and manage the production process of getting quotes, scheduling, and working with suppliers. So with this, um, we're going to make a 3D table tent, and this will be folded. So the previous demonstration kind of showed how you would have to flip um, your type because that would be a fold printed on um, one side. So for paper selection, you're going to need a heavy cardstock because of the weight of that item on a table um, he gave that a two inch on either side to kind of glue on the bottom or attach whether they would be perforated or not um, they could be uh, folded and labeled uh, you know just taped on the bottom or what have you but you would have to make a three fold on this so they may the supplier would deliver them flat um, so we're going to take a look at how we're going to reach our audience and that's to be able to revise a logo um, and to work with high resolution files and we're going to think about that today. So we're going to 
determine the best layout that explores the space and communicates the message. Um, we're going to uh, create a new folder, call it your campaign folder for Grad 130 Table 10. Uh, and then you could put in Week 7 if you want. We'll be laying out this template in InDesign. We'll be thinking about bleeds. And then we'll take um, Photoshop and, you know, use the cropping effects that we utilized in Photoshop, making a 300 DPI. And we will set this up as a U.S. sheet bed coded color profile. You'll place your images in its frame and we'll proof your table tent carefully, make any adjustments, and then this will be printed and assembled. Well, obviously, um, we are not up at the college, but you can print these when we are back up into the college so that you'll have a three-dimensional piece. So that's the assignment for the week. Um, and there's also um, a spec sheet. So the spec sheet that is in week seven also gives you some information about the description, the size of the paper, the paper style, the bleeds, the colors, the quantity of how many will be printed, the application and the version, and the, the list of fonts used. So we'll go through today's lecture. That was just a like a little preview about what you want to do. Do you want to take a break real quick? Um, it's up to you. Well, if we take a break now, um, we're in a good stopping point. We could take a quick break and then um, uh, I'm just going to make a quick cup of coffee so it could be a quick break or you want your 10 or 15 minutes or? Do 15. Do 15? Okay, let's, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and reconvene. So I'll just stop this quick time and uh, we'll do a quick break and then come back uh, in 15 minutes. So 11 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. See you in a bit.